I'm back with my Shin to Shoujo Japanese Maple Pre Bonsai. And as you can see, after our spring pruning on this, it has absolutely exploded with growth. Um, just some really phenomenal development on this tree. You can see the profile that we pruned back to in springtime, kind of in here. And then all of these shoots that have absolutely exploded with growth all came after that pruning job. So this is all late spring, early summer development on this tree. Really quite excited about the progress and we just know that the roots are exploding down in this pot. Something really amazing I wanna share with you. This one branch coming straight out at the camera here, this is actually one of those thread grafts that we did in early spring when we were repotting the tree. Absolutely incredible. The base of this branch is almost a quarter of an inch in diameter. It's actually exceeded the girth of some of the branches that were already there when we started this work. The first thing that I want to do is discuss full defoliation on Japanese maples. Many of the professional bonsai artists strictly oppose the full defoliation process on Japanese maples. I think that that's, I don't think that that's a really good approach. Um, the defoliation process can be really useful on developing these trees, particularly when they're younger. And when we're talking about American bonsai, unless you're Bill Valvanis with really old trees or someone who's been in the business like him for you know, 30, 40, 50 plus years, you're probably working with much younger material. And so you need to keep that in mind when approaching some of these techniques. So if you're going to be looking at a really old Japanese maple bonsai that's already been in development for 35, 40, 50 years, it might be a bad idea to do full defoliation. It's been observed that in some of these older trees, you can actually have branch dieback lose even larger limbs when you do a full defoliation on the tree. We absolutely do not want that in our bonsai. However, we need to keep in mind that when we're doing this technique on much younger trees, particularly trees in development, like when we move a tree into a larger pot or into a wooden box and those roots are growing vigorously, we know that this tree is gonna have an explosion of energy. And that's what you're seeing here with these long extensions is that just absolutely high amount of energy that this tree has uh, to develop new branching. So when you have a tree like this, the full defoliation process is absolutely not harmful. I also wanna address the topic of how late in the season can you defoliate or do major pruning on a tree. Andrew Robson recently put out a video that essentially he said, you need to have at least eight weeks left before your last frost when you stop doing your work on the bonsai. I think that's a really good rule of thumb. And I also just wanna encourage you to take a look at your hardiness zone, look at your first and last frost date, really assess what your season is gonna look like. For me here in Virginia, the first frost can be all the way out till the month of November. So that means I could be doing work all the way out into September. And that's really late in the season. So I think that that's important to know based on your geographical location, how much work you can be doing and what types of work you can be doing. When we did the initial pruning on this tree in late spring, we could have done it full defoliation at that time if it was what was right for the tree. In fact, in our zone here where we have such a long summertime, it's possible to do two full defoliations on a strong, healthy tree. I wanted to learn more about the defoliation process and there wasn't much available online. So what I did is I actually did some experimentation of my own. The Momiji that was in a previous video, that kind of long, tall, literati style tree. A few years ago, I decided to see how many defoliations I could do. And I knew it might be a risk and I could hurt the tree but I just really wanted to see what was possible. I ended up defoliating it three times in one growing season. Now the last defoliation, the third, was right toward the end of the warm season and it was definitely, it was definitely past that eight weeks mark before our first frost. The only way I could keep that tree going was I had to move it into my basement under some grow lights and I was able to extend that growing season for an extra month or two. Now, with that said, on that third defoliation, I did actually lose a few small branches on that tree. So it told me, wow, three defoliations is probably too much, particularly where I was growing the tree and the current strength of that tree. It gave me some really good firsthand experience on what I can expect when defoliating trees. Also, when I did the second defoliation on that tree, it really pushed out slowly. It only extended one node of growth on all of those new shoots. So I probably should have taken that as an indication at the second defoliation 
that there was no more energy left in the tree and I should tread carefully. Since this tree has exploded with growth, it clearly has an excess of energy. I know that I can safely defoliate this tree. And as I've said possibly in an earlier video, there's two windows you can do a full defoliation on your tree. One is gonna be in that late spring period, right after the first flush has hardened off. And then the second is gonna be after summer as our temperatures start to cool off and we head into that early to mid August period. As long as your hardiness zone can support that, you still have eight weeks of growth left in the season. You can do that second defoliation. So without any further ado, I'm gonna pull all the leaves off of this tree. We're gonna assess the structure and then we're gonna decide what we're gonna do with all of these long extending branches. So journey along with me. We're gonna to move to a time lapse. We'll defoliate this tree and then let's take a closer look at what's going on under the hood. Let's take a nice slow rotation around the tree so we can see it from all sides. Now, if I was not doing this on camera, I may have been cutting some of these long branches back as I pruned. But what I really wanted was to show you all the structure so you could follow along with me as we make some of those pruning decisions. This is quite the beautiful tree we have started. This tree is super strong. We're gonna to need to take a look at some of these wounds down here at the bottom. And then take a close look at each of these branch extensions, some of this primary and secondary structure, and make some of those decisions on how we're gonna push this tree forward. And folks, take a look at this branch right here. This is our thread graft. It is just outstanding the amount of growth we got out of this tree. We have that node way back close to the trunk and we'll probably be cutting it all the way back to about here so we can start developing some side branching. A few of these apex extensions have really done a great job of healing over some wounds. We've got some fully closed wounds over here. There's a really large wound in the back. and I think that's going to need a little bit more work to get it healed. So that's okay. We'll take a look at that. We'll clean it up. Some of these other ones over here. How's that looking? Oh yeah, this one here is healing nicely, but it's definitely gonna have a bit more work to do. So that's great. You can see some of these nubs have died back. You can see that brown color there. So we're gonna be able to, that means these have fully compartmentalized. We're gonna be able to cut these back so we can start that transition of taper. Let me turn it around the other side. All right, so here is our first thread graft. This is the branch exiting the trunk. Over here, we have the whip. What we do is come in here with our concave cutters and make a nice, clean cut. Cover that wound up, make sure it heals nicely. We have one more thread graft back here. You can see the entry point in the back of the trunk. Bring that all the way back down to level. And that's going to heal over nicely as so we get that cut putty on there. Branches like this that are heading from their main trunk right through the center of the tree. We can definitely remove those. Those are not going to be useful in our design. Cut this back. Branch is headed in the wrong direction and it's got a long inner node. Don't need these. Here's that thread graft in the front. We've got a few nice branches down here. We're gonna make that hard chop, bring it all the way back and start developing these side branches. We've got branches heading back in the wrong direction. Definitely gonna remove all those. That's too long. Take that all the way back. Let's bring that around to the front. So we've got this really congested area. There's one, two, three, four, five growing out of it. You can see the contortion that's already going on with this trunk line. Let's remove this entire extension. You can see that was quite the hard chop. 
got to be aggressive with this as we're developing that. This is also too long. And this here is possibly going to be our new trunk line. We may need the strength of both branches to keep this going. I'm going to reduce that back. There's a short node at the base. Bring this one back. This is going to be somewhat of a handicap branch to help support this and make sure it grows strongly. Let's remove that downward growing branch there. Let's remove that interior branch and cover all this over with cut putty. This one we may need to wire over into a different position there. Right, this branch is heading the wrong direction and I also see that as a structural flaw there. We're going to remove that entire branch. This is too long and straight. This curves in on itself, but we have a nice branch back here. See, this is an interesting little junction here. I think what I would rather do is develop this branch. We need to fully remove that. This thread graft is looking nice. We're going to develop that branch. Pretty too long. Here's our largest thread graft. Bring it all the way back. Hopefully we can get some buds to push down at the base. See if we can push that back. Probably going to cut this back, but we need something to work with here. We'll get a shoot from one of these. I'm going to take the entire back off of this. And this is the shortest inner node here. This is causing congestion and inverse taper. That definitely needs to go. It's way too long, causing inverse taper. Decisive with our cuts. There we go. Now this tree is a lot earlier in development, so we are hacking and slashing as we go. And our goal is to keep the energy quite high in this tree so we can continue building it. Nice contorted shapes. Possibly a branch, but let's cut it back. Way too high. We can keep that little guy for now, see what it does. Way too long and straight. Way too long. I need to wire these into their own space. Push it back, see what it does. Get a big cut here, so we're leaving this. This branch we'll never use. This is our new apex down here, that low node. And this branch here, probably way too long. We can get some wire on that. Probably a sacrifice branch, but let's get it pointed out there. Let's do one more rotation around the tree so you can see it. We've done a nice trim job here. We'll save some of these decisions for autumn after leaf drop. As long as there's no major inverse taper already started, we can delay those decisions. There's one more big chop there I need to make. Boom. Don't need that. This branch here, probably way too long, waiting on the tree to fill out a little more. But I also don't want this to compete and overshadow that. Hmm. You know what, let's go ahead and just give this the hard cut back. See if we can start developing that branch now, possibly get some additional budding. All right, there we go, folks. These wounds down here. How are they looking? Oh yeah. Fully healed. That's marvelous. This piece. Oh yeah. 
fully healed. That looks great. Perfect wound heal. We'll see you in a few weeks and we'll see how this thing's leafing out. It's the 18th of August and our Shinda Shoujo has started to leaf out wonderfully. We're getting a profusion of shoots at all of the cut ends and we're also getting a lot of really nice back buds and adventitious shoots on some of the interior on the trunk as well as on some of these older branches. This is exactly what we wanted so that we can continue to drive ramification and develop the structure of this tree as we want it. So remember in bonsai we're coaxing the tree along to encourage it to grow branches where and how we want them. And the defoliation process is one of those amazing techniques we have in our tool bag to drive that. We, although we haven't fully leafed out, now is the perfect time to act. What we need to do now is start bud selection. I was watching a bonsai marae video where he talked about his partial defoliation techniques. And the only strong argument I heard against a full defoliation was that you would get too many back buds. Now, I don't know about you, but I love getting excessive back buds. I don't mind the extra work it takes to select buds and pinch the buds we don't need. It allows us the opportunity to put new shoots exactly where we want them. And that to me is how you build a phenomenal bonsai, by working with the tree to get it to grow how and where and when you want it to. So without any further ado, I'm gonna have you come in close and walk you through the process I take to select the buds. Uh, we need to do this in the springtime, we need to do it as we're pinching, and we also need to do it post defoliation in that mid-August period. So come along with me and we will continue to develop this tree. I'm gonna pull you in close and show you what I'm talking about here. Oh, got some spider webs. Need to get rid of those. All right, I'm really excited about this tree. Let's take a look. We've got this branch right here to the front, and you can see the shoot coming out of the bottom here. This is not gonna work. It's headed straight down, and we already have one, two branches at that junction, so we need to just pinch that away. Everything else seems to be doing well. These buds and these buds are swelling. These ones here are just about to open. And then over on this side, these are swelling nicely, and we've also got a really nice back bud there at the base, and that's exactly what we're looking for. Over on this side, we've got one, two, three, four shoots pushing. We want to continue developing this pad, and so we're gonna pinch these bottom growing buds, and we're gonna allow these acutely oriented lateral buds to grow. These tips will get pruned off in early winter after leaf drop. We've got some nice buds that have formed back here as well. There's one here, there's one here. I don't know if you can see it behind this wire, but there's another one back here at this intersection. Because we already have the branching here, I'm gonna remove that bud, we don't need it. And then we have these two buds. Technically, these are not a structural flaw if we allowed both of them to grow, but this one here is almost at a 90 degree angle, whereas this one seems to be pointing along the branch flow. So I'm gonna remove that, and I'm gonna allow that little bud there to grow. Moving over to this branch, this one is growing in a really awkward position. There's this roughed up area here, and you know what, we're gonna allow that to grow and we're gonna see what it does, but we are gonna remove this little bud there at the top. There's a few more here on this side branch. but They are so close to that ramification point, they will cause congestion, so we just need to scrape those away. Just gently scraping those. Let's remove that bottom growing bud, encourage the top one, then we have a side bud here. And then we have two there, that's great. We should probably have a two or three X on a ramification here, just because of that defoliation process. And we've also added some useful back budding, this bud right here in particular. This could be a future replacement for this entire branch. So when we're developing our bonsai, not only are we trying to drive ramification at the end of the branches, we're also working on interior branching that we can cut back to at a future date. Over here, you can see I've done some funny wiring. I've got this wire wrapped across the tip of our thread graft. All of that is gonna eventually get cut off. This was our extending thread graft. We've got some nice buds there. And then I've used this wire to take this branch and bend it over there to the left and get it into a more favorable position. Then I, after this little hook of wire, I just simply wrapped it around here and I'm bending this branch toward the front. It's got a really funny angle. We may end up having to cut that off but there's also another tiny bud right there that may end up replacing the entire branch. And then we've got a bud there 
and a bud there at the end. So we're going to leave that there for now. We're not going to mess with it. We're going to see how that develops over time. Focusing our attention over to this next branch. We may remove these branches all together, but for now, they're helping to spread that energy and slow the tree down a little bit. We don't want all the energy going up to the apex. This bud at the bottom is kind of in the way, so we're going to remove that. That little bud there is interesting for now. I'm going to leave it. We might even remove this entire branch and then just go with this and start developing that little branch there. Taking a look over here, we've got some interesting branching going on. Let's see what we've done here. We've used this wire to push that branch out into its own space. This is an awkward looking shoot, but... It actually is adding to this flow that kind of heads downward in this water falling branch. So although it's probably the better branch, I'm actually going to remove this new shoot and I'm going to continue developing this lower one. Now that it's growing strong, let's go ahead and push this cut end back. We'll cover that over with some cut putty in a minute. This is growing really strongly. Do you see how thick these buds are and how long that inner node is? We're gonna clip that all the way back and we're gonna encourage that super fine branching back here. We're also gonna remove this structural flaw, this bud. There's already a branch there. For now, we're gonna leave those two little buds and see what they do. Push this strong shoot back. Let's do the same over here. Let's push that back as well. I right, wanna make sure you're here with me. We've got this side branch. This is one of those really long ones. Bring that around to the front so you can see what we're doing. We're not 100% sure what we're going to do here. I've been looking at the strength of this branch quite a bit in the last few days. It's almost like we've gotten stronger with this final extension. Okay, so what we're going to do first is we are going to encourage this top shoot, this bottom shoot. All that's going to do is cause a knuckle. So we're going to remove that right off the bottom. And then back here, We've got a profusion of growth that we need to manage. I'll have to look back at the video, but I think my intention, because we had a big chop here, I believe I left this branch only to make sure that these pushed. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna remove that. Don't worry about that little bud there. I think we are past the danger zone. So there we go, we got that tip removed. We can clean that back a little bit further once we get into autumn. There we go. This little branch, it's already bifurcated, and then we have this other one right here. And what we're going to do is we're going to encourage that complete change of direction of this branch by removing all of that extra tissue on the outer edge of that bend. So we're going to encourage this to come through here and start this branching process. I like the movement we're building into this branch here. Let's get rid of that downward growing shoot. We have another shoot off to the side here, and that's going to work out just fine. It's time to remove these upward growing shoots on this branch. Boom, just like that. On this one, we've got to cover this whole backside and the bottom. We opened it up. All right, I think we're going to be okay there. Cover that guy up. In the future, we can decide to cut that back if this gets too powerful. For now, I like it in the design. It's coming because once we come back over to our front position, it's adding some nice length. If we need to reduce back, this might be a nice transition of taper over here, heading downward. You know, now that I'm looking at it, can you guys see this right here? We've got this branch here, and then it steps down and taper. It stays about the same here, but it steps down on this branch. I think we actually need to remove this branch altogether. Now we're gonna leave a stub and allow this to die back naturally. But that does also tell us that we're definitely not gonna use this downward growing bud. All of this is gonna get cut off. This little tiny bud right there in the crotch, that's gonna be our new bifurcation for this branch. This one's gotta go. We're gonna allow this one to grow through the rest of the autumn, and then next spring we'll trim this back. Even though we're allowing dieback, we wanna cover up that wound to reduce any likelihood of infection. The bottom of this is looking great. Let me see if I can get a different camera angle here. Can you guys see that? All right. So this wound has completely healed. It's fully closed up. So we can remove all this cut putty here. And it's okay if we don't get it all, it'll naturally dry up and fall off. I like to remove it so that I know which wounds are finished. I don't have to check them. Because it's so grody on that backside, if we want this to be a beautiful branch, we're gonna have to clean that up. There we go, let's get rid of that knuckle on the bottom. I don't know exactly what happened here, but when we removed that really large branch, it knuckled right on up. Looks like we're going backwards from the healing work we did, but it's also important to make sure we have a new lifeline well established. That's part of our work when we make the initial cut. And at this point, I'm no longer nervous 
about losing this branch. So I cut off all of that necrotic growth on the bottom. And we can do over that with a fresh callus. There we go. Come in there with a clean razor blade. Clean up that edge. Another interesting topic of discussion is when to make these large cuts. And I'm sure you've all heard the common wisdom that you should be making these large cuts at probably like, you know, the end of May after the leaves harden as the best time to be doing these larger chops. But in my experience, that's not universally true. Now, although that is the time when wounds will heal the quickest and fastest, that doesn't necessarily make it the best. And I say that because when a wound is healing fast, think of it as quick and dirty, right? So you're gonna get a much more overdeveloped callus during the quickest part of the growing season. But when you have a wound healing more slowly, so in the autumn we have that natural period of vascular tissue growth, and that is gonna heal some of these wounds or at least get them started. We may need to go all the way through winter and next spring before this is healed. Our callus is gonna be a lot less grotesque when we grow it slowly. So patience is key, in my opinion. So when we're doing some of these refinement cuts, I think this late autumn period is a really good time. Make sure we fully seal that wound. That's gonna make for a nice, smooth transition of taper through that branch line. And I'm not worried if we need to heal this for a few years, that's fine. And next we've got to address this branch here. We've got these long shoots, one going up, one going down. Those are way too long for the design. Definitely not going to be able to use this branch going straight into this other branch. So we're going to remove that. I'm also going to remove this upper growing shoot. And there we go. We've got this shoot here, and there's a tiny little bud right there in front of my finger. We're going to allow that to develop. Looking back over here, we've got a bud back here. We're going to remove that. We've got another bud here. We like that one. We're going to keep it. We're gonna remove that bud down here. This entire branch is coming off, but we'll wait. We wanna make sure this bud has plenty of time to grow and develop before we remove that. We can remove this next spring. Focusing up here. This branch isn't too bad. It's kinda of long. You definitely don't want that shoot there. And direct that growth forward. Over here, we've got a pretty congested branch. Let's push this back. We're also gonna remove the buds off the top. We wanna to keep our growth going out from the center of the tree. So let's get rid of that, get this shoot there. Let's remove this and encourage this branch to grow into its own space right through here. This is too much branching on one node. We've got this branch, we've got that branch. For now, that's okay. We're gonna come back in here and we're gonna wire this one down into place, which also means we don't need this back shoot. And this is a super long shoot. It's too big for the design. I don't see any back buds on this branch, but we're gonna give it an opportunity to bud. We need to get rid of all these buds that are overcrowding this section here. This one here, that is also a structural flaw, but it's in an interesting position, and this is a pretty thick branch. So for now, I'm gonna leave that. We may have an opportunity to develop a really tiny little mini apex in this area. This branch, has given us some back budding, so we're gonna push that further. Do not need a downward growing branch. This little branch is growing really well. These we don't need. All these are doing is causing congestion. That little bud there might be a nice branch. So we're gonna take that one off, and this little guy we're gonna leave. There's another one down in here. That is not a useful branch. Over here. Got this little branch here. These we definitely don't need. It's an interesting one here. You see how that's making a spoke. You need to choose sides here. For me, we're allowing that branch to grow out. Gotta get rid of that bud in the back. If I can remove this wire without damaging my buds, we are going to regrow that branch in a completely different spot. And very careful not to damage our buds. Uh, 
All right, you can see this branch here. We've got this big branch that came off the top, which is not the worst thing, but we are trying to develop our lateral growth because we have these other apexes over on the other side that are gonna fill in this space. This apex here, we're trying to send that out, almost like a windswept on this side of the tree. So I'm gonna remove that top shoot. Let's get rid of that, get rid of that. And that right here is our new branch. Isn't that exciting? We got a new shoot right there to replace it. This shoot is so long. I don't think we can use it in the design. Is this even starting to heal? No. All right, so for now we are gonna leave this. Our goal is to replace this branch with one of these shoots here. We're gonna plan on growing out this branch this direction. This we're going to consider a sacrifice branch. We're going to allow this to run freely. All of this we're just going to let run. It's got some damage there. It's okay. We're going to let that go. We're going to get rid of this crotch growth. I think we're going to use either that bud or this bud as the continuation of the branch. So for now we're just going to leave all that be. So as you can see I'm working my way around the tree selecting the buds that we need for our design. This shoot is too long. This branch not helping us. Boom. We had to make a big decision there. We have branches on the back side. All of these need to go. There we can see our thread graft. So we've got two beautiful shoots on it. Our big chops over here are doing great. We're going to remove these buds on the inside. Here's our other thread graft. And we actually have four shoots coming out of that one. Because we have this other branch over here, I'm going to develop those two branches that are coming off the top left. We're going to remove those bottom growing buds. We've got a bunch of competing buds. This branch up here, we're going to need to wire down and do a real simple move. Just like that. And now we've got this branch directed outward. We're going to definitely get rid of that downward growing shoot. We're going to put all the energy into that branch there. You can see we've got a whole bunch of congestion in our branching for it's just the growth we want. So we've got our branch headed this way and then we're going to have one additional branch right here. We need to remove the bud that's growing downward as well. Further refine this chop, pull that clay back, since we have this budding on that side, we need to reduce this. We want to get rid of that knuckle. Make sure that we are building the branch into a nice, beautiful shape. Extra bud there in the back. As far as this branch is concerned, crank it just a little bit more. Let's get that down in that lower position. We have a few nice buds here. There's the end. We've got a back bud we don't need right there. Got rid of that. This little bud is great, but there's a nice bud off the top there that's gonna add some branching that's beautiful. All right, we are on our way with that. This is a nice delicate branch. Let's see if we can creatively use this wire to also control this branch over here. There we go. See that? We got this branch positioned. This needs wire. We can keep this branch as long as we move it into a useful position. This branch looks like it's competing with this other apex. Can you all see how long this branch is? It just looks completely out of proportion for the design, and it's heading down into the direction of this other apex. So these are naturally conflicting. Now there are some buds further back on this branch. You see that tiny little bud right there? What we want to do is develop that, if possible, before giving up on this branch. So we're going to remove all this, and we'll see if that is enough to encourage budding in the area we want. We are in the beginning stages of this tree, so we have plenty of time to develop all the fine ramification. Got some good back budding on this one. And up here in the very tippy top, we've got buds coming out of our ears. So we're gonna need to control these. I like this one coming to the front. We're gonna leave that for now. 
on the inside of this bend. That's not going to be good for anybody. So we need to clean all those out. A little bit of a lumpy mess there. Let's spin this around. As you can see, in the end, we may choose this to be our apex. We may remove this entire thick branch here because it looks like that is going to be a better transition to taper. What do you think, folks? Should I remove this entire fix here and only go to this branch? What should we do here? Personally, I'm leaning toward removing it because if it's chunky now, it's going to be chunky later. And I think we'd have a lot more interest in this trunk line if we bend it back toward the left. And then this shoot here is also really chunky comparatively. We're not getting that taper built in. If we follow this trunk line, we've got a nice reduction in taper. This will thicken up over time. This top branch is a sacrifice branch. And then this little side nub here with a nice short inner node. This is our true continuation of the apex. All right, so let's go ahead and make that decision now. Let's remove this apex over here. Here we go. Now let's turn this around. So you can see the size of that cut. That's a monster chop there. And we do need to clean that up with a razor blade here. All right, it's a little bit rough right there, but I don't want to damage that bud. Take a look at that. How is that for a nice, smooth transition to taper there? You can already see that branch coming together. We already have this chunky monkey right here. I think we're gonna be much better off without it. Boom. All right. Nice and clean. Way too long. Get this branch down. I do like this apex. This is too long. All right, that's probably about as much as I can get done here. Let's see how long these are. Get rid of that. I only need one. All right, so we are just about done here. That was a pretty tedious process, which is probably why many bonsai professionals advise against the full defoliation. Although you have all that adventitious budding and back budding all over the tree, if you have an entire nursery full of mature Japanese maples. That's gonna be way too much work to handle. But for the average hobbyist who's starting to develop a quality pre-bonsai or even a, a younger tree, that back budding is just absolutely invaluable to the forward progression of your trees. And you really need to take advantage of it when you can. There's a couple more there. We may end up having to lose this branch in the future, but for now, let's just keep developing it forward. 
you're going to keep finding more too as you go along here. You're going to be like, wow, I thought I did all of that. And there's one more little branch. So at your home garden, just feel free to go out and check over the tree every day. As your tree leaves out, you can continue to go back into your garden every day and inspect your branches and make additional decisions on pinching back. It's always okay to err on the side of caution and save a few buds that you're questionable about. As it starts to leaf out and fill in, you'll really start getting a better idea of where those branches are gonna go, how much space they're gonna take up, and you'll be set up in a really nice position. So I'm really excited about the progression of this tree. It's still just a few little short buds popping out. In a few more weeks as this leaves out, we'll film a little bit more so I can show you the progression of this entire process of defoliation. I wanna make sure that you see it from start to finish and you have a good idea of what you can expect if you try this in one of your trees. Rotation around the tree so you can see what we're working with. front of the tree kind of somewhere in there somewhere in this area here feel free to take a screenshot and send me a message on Instagram if you think you have an idea of where the best front of this tree could be so I'm excited about this let's let's flash forward and so let's flash forward and see this thing in leaf all right folks well time got a little bit away from me the last few weeks with things going on at work but I wanted to capture the leafed out Shinda Shoujo before I put this video up. So here we go, I'm just coming around the tree and I wanted to show you that it is leafed out quite marvelously. And after all that tedious bud selection, we have a really nice balanced and full canopy of leaves here. So this tree is looking absolutely amazing. In fact, sorry, I already missed the peak red color and it's already starting to get hints of olive green coming through that red. Such a beautiful tree. Let me come back here to the front and get down inside of the canopy here so you can see what's going on. And yeah, it's just looking outstanding. So you can see that we've got a few of these branches these shoots that have ran. This one is maybe three nodes long. A few others are extending out. And that's okay. I'm just going to let these grow. I don't want to do any additional pinching. We're already uh, September 2nd today. So this little tree is well on its way to becoming a beautiful bonsai. And we will catch you next time. Thanks again for tuning in. Feel free to drop into the comment section. Let me know what you think. And drop me any questions you might have about defoliation or bud selection. And I'd be happy to answer your questions there in the comments. Or if you want to do a longer conversation, you can always hit me on Instagram in the DMs. I would love to share any knowledge that I have with the rest of you. While we're here, let's do a quick update. Here's that rescue tree. It leafed out quite well. And I think we decided this is a fire glow, not a blood good, because it got that really nice characteristic leaf color in the second flush. Just look at that, beautiful. Panning over here, we got a bunch of different seedlings, air layers, got a dragon tears here. There's a reuse in air layer. There's my largest. Benichi Dori. I did end up defoliating that. This is the one that I got almost every one of the clones off of. So after I defoliated it, you can see I got a little bit of wire onto some of those longer extending branches so we can get some movement now. Some of these are way too long to keep in the design, but adding that movement in is setting these branches up to be much better air layers or even rooted cuttings, they'll already have a little bit of movement into those stems. And so we're setting up the baby trees. Here's this little rooted cutting here. You can see I've got that nice curve in the stem here. That's from wiring it prior to taking it as a rooted cutting. There's the other Benichi Dori. And not captured, I didn't have time to video it, but our 
Kiyohime air layer here. I did end up defoliating that because it got a little bit of leaf burn and it leafed out quite well. You can see that the second flush, these leaves are juvenile. They're a little bit longer on that center node and they have a lot more serration on the margin here. So that's how you can kind of see that juvenile growth. Even on our Shinda Shoujo, when we look nice and close, you can see it's got that exaggerated tooth there on the margin. And that's going to be a little bit different than the shape of a Dishojo leaf that, you know, grows normally in the spring. Those are going to be less serrated and they're going to have a nice fat lobe that you're going to notice. So anyway, still a Shin Dishojo, but the leaves look slightly different. In any case, it is just a beautiful tree. This is one of our rooted cuttings from last year. This is the old school, original gangster Dishojo. And this was that root over Afghanite project that we did. You can see the gold pyrite showing through, but I cut a few of our little ties. And this is rooted really well. It is just gripping onto that rock. Can't even move it. So that's pretty awesome. And this is our trunk line here. We got some nice movement into it. We're allowing it to really extend out. And then the Pretty much this entire upper section here, this is all sacrificial growth. So if we come around to the back, we're gonna end up, we'll probably air layer this off next year. And this was just to help thicken up this trunk and get these roots growing strongly. So that one's done really well. Over here, this is a Shinda Shoujo. This is off my other smaller double trunk, pre-bonsai. This is that air layer that I took and it's done really well. We've got some roots popping out everywhere. So excited to get another propagation. This one has some really wild movement. Might be hard to see, but if we get down in here, you can see I was able to get some really contorted movement in this. Zero scars, I'm very proud of this one. And that's by wiring the branches when they are just thin and supple. So you got to get the branches when they're like this and wire them in, get that movement set in order to set up this really crazy contorted movement with no scars. Really cool little project. What else have we got going on around the garden? Got some various things. Unfortunately, my Nishikigawa's both died. So we did that Nishikigawa root over rock. That one recently died. See a little bit of color there in the buds, but this is a goner, it's completely dead. Sad. Got a few other Shinda Shoujo projects over here. Here is our big air layer off the standard Acer Palmatum. It's doing really good in here. We got roots popping out of the corners of the box. So that's doing really well. And there's the mother tree over there. It's doing well as well. Here's our Kiyohime. It's doing really well after that defoliation. And we're gonna just let this thing rock and roll all the way through autumn. Over here, oh yeah, we defoliated our Twombly's Red Sentinel as well. Got some leaves falling already. And this has leafed out quite well. We're letting those tops run. Those are gonna really thicken up these two trunk lines, so that's going to be pretty cool. Anyway, this tree's looking great. Excited to see how it flushes out next year. All right, folks, another update. We've got our massive blood good air layer. This thing has not sent a single root. All it's done is calloused up. And so what I'm going to have to do either here in the next week or two or possibly next spring I'm gonna definitely have to do a bunch of root grafts on this. I did a air layer on a blood good when I first started back in 2021, and it was a failure. So maybe it's just blood good, I don't know. I've heard people say they have success with rooting these. I was really confident that it would root, but it has been absolutely stagnant. So I'm gonna try once again to get this thing by grafting roots onto it. I'm gonna take a bunch of my little saplings 
and I'm going to graft roots all the way around the perimeter of this and we're going to give it a try see if we can save it here's our candy kitchen it's doing really well we've got a nice full canopy and as you can see here it is just rocking and rolling there's our patch we did with that two-part putty cement it's doing great I need to get the edge of this scarred up and then cover it back over with cut putty. So I'll do that probably today or tomorrow. And our Oridono Nishki is leafed back out. And it's doing really good. So we're gonna have to clean that up. It's still very early in development. So we're gonna let it grow, cut back, grow, cut back over several seasons. And we'll start filling in. So that's cool. This is another really nice little project here. I got some really interesting seedlings that I twisted up. I did get a little bit of wire scar, you can see there, but not too bad. So I've just got some really interesting contorted movement in these. These are going to be some pre bonsai. I may graft these over with different foliage, but I wanted to just develop some really unusual trunk lines. So that's what I've been doing with these. Um, so these are cool. We'll keep an eye on these. If we flash back, so those were from two-year-old trees. These one-year-old trees, you can see I've got some contorted movement started in these. And so we'll let these set over the fall. You see I've got a nice open coil, so we're not scarring these trunks. And we'll leave these on for a month or two to get that movement set. And then we'll have a nice new set of pre bonsai stock to work with there. There's a cool one. This is one of my tridents. I haven't done any trident videos yet, but as you can see, the continuation of this trunk, I got it chopped back, and then I did a very hard bend on this leader, force it down into a branch position, and then it should back bud down here, and that will become a new leader so that we can start extending that. And this is kind of the Miyogi development style, bending over the apex to make it into a branch. So pretty cool little project. What else we got here? A couple little maples. Just did some hard chops. And we're starting to develop a little bit of a trunk line. That's pretty cool. Here's a neat little trident that I kept small. It's got a really crazy movement to it. It's a little bit contrived, but it's, you know, a little bit whimsical and fun. So we'll see how this thing continues to develop. Oh yeah, one more you got to see over here. This trident, really cool tree. I've got this thing rooting up over the top of a dragon stone. And this is just awesome. This is going to be such a cool tree. Can you guys see how amazing that root spread is there? We've got roots gripping perfectly. And I tied this down over this rock so you can see the roots just absolutely perfectly gripping onto this rock and another year or two of growth this is going to be great so next spring what i'll do is i'll move this into something bigger i'll elevate the rock up that way we can really start getting some massive root growth on this and that's just going to continue to fatten those up and get them really gripped onto that rock really cool little project here i'm excited about these root over rocks they're going to be cool and then if you look here we got a little wire on this. This is going to be our main apex of the tree. Everything from here up, this is all sacrificial. That's going to go. So I'm probably going to let that run one additional year so we can continue fattening up the base. And then we'll do a hard chop right here. And then this is our new leader coming out this way. Cool little tree. One of those projects is going to take a few years to get going, but it's going to be amazing. One last project. Over here I've got three air layers of Katsura that I took last year. And so I'm excited in the spring I'm going to put these all together into a planting. And that's going to be awesome. Crazy this summer flush. Look how large this is. Katsura is a tiny leaf tree, but this one branch here. Just went crazy and extended with this gigantic, almost blood good size leaf. Really kind of cool. All right, folks, thanks for tuning in. I appreciate you. And 
feel free to drop in the comments and send me any questions you have.